on the answer to all your questions. Hello, everyone. It's Anthony, the one and only, getting ready to do a review for Common Rider Ghost, episode ten. Gather the fifteen icons. And I'm also joined by my co-stars. Hey guys, Rizwan here, also known as uh, CMD Drake. Um, on Twitter, Instagram, everything else, and Blue Commander Otaku Center the Ranger. And I'm joined by. What is up, guys? I'm Nathan Desa. I'm also Silver Knight of Otaku Sentai Digi Ranger, and I also own my. I also have my own Kamen Rider fan page where I am Admin O's. It is called Kamen Rider Forever. You should check that out. And how is it going? Yeah, I'm the newest admin on that team. Yay! Yep. So if you enjoy these videos, you should also check out that page. Yeah, because we just post a lot of goofy crap on there. Mm -hmm. So, episode 10. That is such an involved episode. Like, holy crap, there's a lot of things that happen here. I'm actually pretty excited about this episode. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, um. Right away, we uh, get right into Takeda Akari t filling in on Ari about Mikado and his sister being canon and his sister being stuck in the icon and everything. Everything. And, huh? I said, every I'm just repeating everything you said. It's everything. <laughs> yeah. So, Takeda has left with a huge choice to make. Either he continues his quest for himself and revive himself because in, you know, less than 30 days, he'll be dead for realsies. 30 freaking days. And I could be off by like a few days, give or take four or five. But either way, he has about a month left. Not a lot of time to find 15 icons twice. Mm -hmm. If it even works that way. We don't even know if it works that way. I'm it's guessing it works like Dragon Balls. Yeah, I mean, this could, be, this, this could not be Dragon Balls. It could be like a once in a century kind of thing. Mm -hmm. If you don't get it now, it could be another hundred years where we can do it again. <laughs> but, Takaru being Takaru is like, well, I have to bring Cannon back to life because that's what's right. I'll uh, sacrifice myself. And Akari and Nanari are like, no, you can't. Hey, what is wrong with you, we, dude? Like, we, are you just... You're you're not you're thinking of her good. What about our good? We're your friends and family. We need you back. We can't imagine life without you. Your life is too important. You're common writer freaking ghost. How can you possibly like just die so some girl can live when you're like the hero of everything? Right. So Yeah, um Akari is like, okay, look, let's go find Mikado and try and, like, fi figure this out. Meanwhile, um, Naruto and Sibuya are finally are in the loop. Uh, Onari brings up to speed and starts, like, explaining what's actually going on. Takaru Ta being a ghost. Um, Takaru not being, like, really alive. They have a month to find everything. So, they're, they're kind of, like, brought to speed and they're like, oh god, we must help. Anything for Takaru-san. We love Takaru-san. And uh, they go off looking for Sionzi, who, by the way, is on the rooftop, um, talking to a Ganma, telling him Makata's weak spot is his sister, and they go take the icons from him. And Sionzi will go after Takeda and get the icons from Takeda in the meantime. Uh, Takeda, like, try, uh, gets Akari to help, like, find Makato, and Yurison appears, like, Hey, um, Mikado's, like, walking up to you right now, and Mikado starts to hand him, but Akari stops them both from going into another pointless fight, because we've seen how many of these now? I don't know, I lost count of Like them. three, like three or four? Three or four is an understatement, my friend. I feel like it's more like a couple, I feel like it's at least seven or eight. Maybe I'm wrong, but it feels like a lot. It does feel like a lot, but yeah, these I, two I fight every episode almost. Yeah, because um, their first encounter they didn't even like fight. They just kind of he kind of just like stole his icon, and he's like, yeah, it's mine. The second time they did fight, the third time they fight, it was actually they fought twice in one episode actually. Yeah, 
So there's been a lot of pointless fights, so thank you for stopping this one. Uh, <laughs> Akari's trying to explain that, you know, we all play the children, we're all, like, best friends, and, you know, Takeda's running out of time, and Makata responds with, so you just want Kayana to die, you don't care about her at all, you care more about your friend Takeda, but not my sister. And Akari's, like, dumbfounded, like, what do I do here? Like, oh, I didn't mean it that way. I just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And Canon again, like in the last episode at the very end, she tells her brother, "Look, it's okay. I don't mind. Let him live. I don't. It's okay." And this has the reverse effect because <coughs> Takara, I think, decides at this point he's gonna do it for real. And Akari keeps trying to explain to uh, him, like, "Look, we'll try and find a way to save them both." And, uh, Makata's like, no, screw you, and he trigger Henson's in the King Tut, and Makata says, I'm gonna fight for Cannon, and asks Takeda, what's he gonna fight for, and Takeda's like, I'm gonna fight for her, too, in my own way, and, uh, Takeda Henson's into Nobunaga, and Billy the Kid, and try and fight back, but... Uh, Takeda feels like it's a really pointless fight because, well, he wants the same thing as, uh, Mikado. Like, he's not gonna get in the way of him. But that was an epic, epic, epic gun battle, though. Nobunaga and Dude. Billy the Kid. Oh, no, it was, like, it was perfect. Um, because whenever they had Nobunaga and, uh, Musashi, no, not Musashi, uh, what did I just say? It, well, it actually, um, he only has two. Well, he only has two, right? Tut. It was Tut and Nobunaga, and then Tucker has, you know, his his versions of a. Uh, they kind of had the same, had the same fighting styles. That, that's what I was gonna get at it. Nobunaga yeah. and Billy the Kid are the same, and Musashi and King Tut are almost the same in fighting style. That's what. It yeah. Was. Yeah, as well as well as, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I was getting Nobunaga and uh, King Tut's fighting styles mixed up. But it was really epic. Like, they have their guns pointed at each other, and Taker's like, no, screw it. We're not going to do this. It's not going to happen. I'm going to save Cannon. I want to join forces with you and do it. And I'm thinking to myself, like, you should not have lowered your guard like that. <laughs> that was a dumb idea, my friend. That was a dumb idea. Um... <clears throat> So you guys want to chime in more because I feel like I just like explained half the episode in like one second. Yeah. So uh, after that, uh, you know that he. Okay. So Akari is dumbfounded by the fact that uh, that Takaru is choosing Kanon's life over his. But you know Takaru is trying to be the nice guy. And it's like, hey, buddy, you know, let's work together. You know, be like the old times. But you know, Mikado, you know, he once again says that ah, you're just some naive dumbass. So. Uh, but it's not wrong. Yes. So and you know, but Takaru is insisting that he wants to restore Kanon's life, and this results in Makoto flashing back to uh he had a conversation with uh Takaru's father Ryu, and Ryu was telling him to study the lives of illuminaries and open the eyes to his soul and 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 this, and Mikado, uh, and he remembers asking Takaru's father about, uh, about, like, if Takaru's father wants to be a luminary. But, uh, all his father said was that he just wants to do what he can to give life to the future. And he wants Makoto to, uh, follow that path. So then we snap back to reality. Uh, Takaru attempts to convince his Makoto Nissan to join him once again, but, uh, but, uh, after that, uh, you know, Makoto just keeps on being his jerky self, and he attempts to use his Omega Drive to just, like, finish the battle, and then, and then, like, Akari steps in front to, uh, to save Takaru, but then, you know, Takaru steps in front as well, because, you know, he wants to take the hit, which is actually pretty brave. But then, as... Brave or stupid? It's both. <laughs> difference. But, uh, I mean, there could be. But it's not like he would die, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Like... But 
But then as the but then as he's about to make the attack, Kanon appears in front of them both, and Makoto intentionally misses his attack after that because you know she's trying to she's trying to show Makoto what he's doing. So you know it's kind of like similar to this. Uh, I mean I guess you could say like he intentionally diverts his attack like the same way that uh, Eric did that in Time Force when he when like Trip was standing up for him from wanting to like kill this mutant. So. uh... Yeah. She was all like, uh, no, she was like, uh, Yamade, on a chance. So after that, uh, Makoto disappears, and, uh, the Javert guy, or Javel, or however you want to pronounce his name. Javert, Zavel, Zabert, Zavel, Zavel. They're all the same name, and they're all. There's, I've, seen that guy, I've seen that guy's name with too many different spellings. I was actually somewhat disappointed with this guy, honestly. I thought he'd be more important. Yeah, we'll talk more about him. For those of you who, like, did catch our last video, like, just to uh, sum it up, uh, Javert's uh, Gamma, he has a human form. He's played by the same guy that played Geki Chopper in Chukin Sentai Geki Ranger, and he's just, like, a general that was sent to help Alon, and that's it. I mean, there's really nothing else to him. Uh, so, so now that, uh, the fight's over. Uh, Takaru skull Takari, you know, uh, pretty much saying, like, you know, she, what she did was really reckless and asks if she values her life. And, you know, Akari decides to be a little sassy and says, well, I could say the same thing about you. So, uh, and she, and, but Akari is more mad at the fact that, of course, she wants to save Kanon, Kanon, but, uh, she thinks that Dakarin needs to value himself as well because, you know, obviously only one person can be safe from these icons. So, so after we do, so after we go back to that, um, Makoto, uh, he's talking to Kanon, and and you know he's really furious that she stepped in the way and like she's and like she stepped into that fight. And, you know, Kanon is now saying, like, well, I don't want to come back to life if I have to come back to, to like, what you're like now, Oni-chan. Like, I don't like the man that you've become. Yeah. So, like, she doesn't even recognize him. And and then while that's happening, uh, the Ganma, he appears and he grabs the uh, icon that Kanon, that has Kanon in it. And threatens to destroy it unless Makoto hands over his icons. And, you know, and pretty much a typical exchange. Uh, it actually doesn't go the way that you think it would, it would go. Uh, I think it would go. To call, uh, uh, Makoto hands over all his icon, all his luminary icons. I think he still has four right now. And, uh, and he gets Kanon back. And, of course, Makoto is believing that. Alon is behind this, so he's not going to trust those guys anymore. Or anyone for at all in general. So, and speaking of Alon, we go back to him. Uh, he's with Javel. They're at this uh, football stadium, or I guess, or some kind of stadium. I don't know. Uh, and but they're they're at that typical stadium that appears in like several Super Sentai fights. Like I don't know. I remember this being like a fight where. Uh, the uh, Ghost Sagers met some of the Shinkinjers in the crossover movie, so, but that's the only major action scene I can remember from that stadium, but, uh, but, uh, but, so, uh, so after that, uh, Jabbird is telling Alon about Makoto gathering the icons for a personal reason, you know, like, he, ne he never really wanted to help us, he was just, he was just trying to collect these icons for his own personal needs, and, and Alon just stops and just stops and says, like, you can take care of that because, uh, apparently Takaru is changing Makoto, so, so he wants Javel to pretty much kill Takaru. So, Alon leaves, uh, but we get, like, this one scene, which is, like, dun 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 worthy, where it's revealed that Javel is actually a keep, keeping a secret from Alon, like, he's pretty much saying about, a. That, you know, he says, he asks Alon to forgive him for not telling him about these true secrets behind these icons. 
So, yeah, that's that's probably an interesting thing that we're probably going to be exploring later. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. So meanwhile, we go back to uh, Onari and Narita, and, uh, you know, they're looking for Scion G, and... And while they're and while they're look and while they're trying to hurry up the stairs to get to it, uh, Sionji finds Shibuya and stops and stops him. And pretty much he uh, well, what happens is that like I don't know, like he stuffs an icon into his face and get so that, okay, basically he wants to like take control of Shibuya so that okay, you can probably guess what's gonna happen. He's gonna use Shibuya to steal the icons. So, uh, so then we cut back to the temple where everyone's come back. Uh, Takaru and Akari are telling Onari what happened, and, uh, you know, Akari leaves to go examine the monolith, and, uh, she's gonna use the formulas that she got from Igarashi last episode. And, and of course, uh, Shibuya, since of course he's trying to get the icons. He asks Takaru if he can see the icons, and, you know, Takaru falls for it. Falls for it and puts them all on the table. And then when... And then uh, Shibuya uses these icon powers to shock and knock out uh, Narita and Onari. And so... And then, of course, Takaru's in shock, so he goes to call an ambulance. And But, of course, he's... He leaves his icons on the table, so, you know, guess what happens after that. Uh, They're all gone! No! They can't be! But, you know, there's a there's a fortunate thing here. Yes, there is a... Spider Lantern comes to the rescue. Yes, because those things are awesomely useful. Like, they're just so deus ex machina at this point, because whatever you need done, Spider Lantern and the other thing are just, like, ready to roll, or, like... You need something found? You need to find Takaru? Here's Takaru. You need to find your missing icons? Here, we got that too. We got everything. We are god almost. So. Yeah, Spider Lantern can be his own hero, basically. <laughs> it could. Exactly. But uh, Spider Lantern le uh, leads them to where Sibuya stole the icons, and Takaru wakes up Anari and Narita, and they head after him, and, uh,. Onari, they find uh, Sibuya about to hand over the icons to Daganma, but uh, they throw a spider dono at Daganma and uh, Sibuya and get the icons like dispersed across the entire area, like into the forest and everywhere. And uh, talk, uh, they, they, Ganma is Ganma and the attacker start fighting. Onari and Narita are holding on Sibuya to make sure he doesn't get involved and get himself hurt. Um, Onari at one point is like, look, Naruto, help, hold on to Sibuya while I go grab the uh, Benkai icon to give it to Takaru. And Takaru becomes, uh, Benkei, uh, uses the Benkei Omega Drive, destroys the Ganmo, who drops the, uh, Mikado's icons, which, uh, they all recognize is not their icons, but Mikado's. So they're like, oh, snap. Look what we got here. We gotta figure out what to do with these. Uh, meanwhile, Yuris and Kundak's like, hey, go help Sepuya become normal, because he's kind of still freaking out over there. So, he, uh, goes and does something to Sepuya. I don't actually know what he did, like, just a flash of light kind of thing, I guess. That yeah. does that typical thing where, like, he, like, draw, like, he, like, brings the icon out of Shibuya and just destroys it. Yeah. Meanwhile, they get all the icons together for Mikado's, and, um, Onari and, uh, the two, Nerd and Sibuya, go looking for the rest of the icons that Takaru lost. And, guess what? Guess what happens next? Is it A, the Ganma dies of natural causes, B, pigs are flying, or is it C, Mikado arrives waiting to fight, wanting to fight. You Anthony, pick, you pick, you pick, if you pick A, A through C, you're wrong. <laughs> no. What? C is the correct answer. Oh, I, I, I miss, I misheard C. I read the same of it. <laughs> no, C is the correct answer. <laughs> Mikado is back wanting to fight again. 
But then, of course, as that happens, uh, here comes Javel, and it's revealed that Javel also has his own icon, and he's able to transform into his own uh, Gamma. Rider S kind of thing. Yeah, kind of, kind of like uh, how uh, Chase was prior to becoming a uh, Common Rider Chaser and Drive. Yeah. <laughs> so, Takara and Mikado are fighting Zavil together as a team because, uh, well, enemy of my enemy is your uh, friend. Or no. The enemy of your. You know what? I can't say it. I'm too tongue twisted. Can, can y'all. Okay. The enemy of the enemy is your friend. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe you could say that it's kind of like a. Maybe you could say it's kind of like that episode of Power Rangers Ninja Storm where the Wind Rangers and the Thunder Rangers, who were still at odds with each other at that point, had to fight the Shadow Ninja things. Yeah. But basically, the enemy of your enemy is your friend, so Takara and Mikado found a uh, common ground to go fight Zavil together and get the icons back. And they're trying to figure out why does he even want the icons to begin with, and he, Zavil won't tell him. But instead, just knocks him around, like just k kicking their asses and everything. And uh, Takaru somehow just grabs all his icons again. And Yurison grabs as many as he can. I think he got like four or something. And up on the cliff, there's good old Sionzi holding his other icons in the case. And he does a thing where <clears throat> all icons in the area, which by the way at this point we have all 15 icons in the same place, hence the title. Gather all fifteen icons. Yep. Um, so Sion's he re uh, is like getting pretty happy that the icons are all his and that nobody else can stop him. Puts up a big force field around the temple area to keep everyone locked out, which is kind of dick because Mikado and Takeda are locked out as well. Mm -hmm. And everything just kind of goes crazy. That's a pretty big force field, actually. It's like pretty large and cumbersome. Um. Back in the lab, uh, uh, Akari is um, noticing the Mondo suddenly lights up, and she looks for Gramps for an explanation, but instead it's thrown back against the wall from the bl blast and knocked unconscious. Meanwhile, Sionsi arrives in the lab, like super lightning fast apparently, because he was at a cliff a minute ago, and next thing you know, he's in the uh, basement lab. The power of the icons. Right. <laughs> the power of Combinator physics apparently. I mean, he's like super fast. Barry Allen, watch out, dude. You got you got some company here. Right? <laughs> yeah, he could probably mm. give Ash a run for his money. So. <laughs> yeah, I get it. But the episode ends with uh, Sionzi walking up to the monolith and saying, it's just time to begin the ceremony. <laughs> and to be continued. And that's a cliffhanger. And then there's a preview, and blah, 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 and that's all it, and that's it. Yeah. Then commercials, and that's it. Yeah, that happened. So, uh, gotta say, I really enjoyed this episode a lot. Oh, yeah, same here. Like, one of the best of the series. Yeah. Um, I mean, I really like how this new whole, like, plot that comes from, like, with Takaru figuring out about Kanon, because it creates, like, a legit concern now, because, like, Takaru wants to help Kanon, but that also means that by doing that, he could lose his own life. So it's a pretty complex thing. Like, it's not so black and white this time. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I really enjoyed, like, the entire, like, thing, because he's feeling guilty for not wanting to help her. And because of that guilt, he starts trying to help her. But then he doesn't understand that Akari and Anaya really care for him. And... I'm gonna come out and say it right now. I don't know if I said it before, because I've seen up until this point in the last couple of videos. But Anthony, yeah, you're right. About Onari is not as annoying as I thought he was. Yes, I knew it. I knew you'd say it. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. He's still stupid, and he will not stop being stupid because he's just that kind of character. True. However. He becomes very useful. Very useful. Mm hmm Like, he's not he's not just comic relief. He's actually contributing to the greater good in his own stupid, silly way. He's got these two guys that are helping him. Not, with the two of them together, 
Like all three of them, they, they make a unit that provides some pretty good support for Taco in a battle. Like they can go get the icons that fall, throw them back to Taco when they get knocked out of his hand or something. And you know, just it adds another element of him. Yeah, in a way, um, he becomes his uh, unk from Comrade O's. If you think about it. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, he, he hands him the medals in, in that series. He's handing him the icon in that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and we bring up those now because uh, Riz has now started O's. So. Yeah, Yay. I want to say one. Um, I might do a thing at some point about it. Who knows? Yeah, we'll probably, yeah, once he finishes O's, we should all probably do a review on that series. Yeah. yeah. But I want episode one. I really enjoyed it. The ending is all creepy. What the hell is that ending? <laughs> like, really? I'm not going to say too much more than that, but that ending is kind of creepy. Uh, well, that character that he's talking about in particular can be a pretty creepy person. Just oh my it. god, I'm, I'm, sitting, I'm sitting here like watching this late at night on my iPad. And it goes from like, okay, pretty badass, and poor detective, he died. To, oh god, the moving hand. That's like the relative of a cousin it no, is it cousin it? Or is it thing? Is it a what? Adam's family reference. The thing. It's thing. It's hang, thing. Hang, hang it's cousin hands. it was the hairball. Yeah. Cousin it's cousin. No. Thing's cousin, I meant sorry. Wow. Yeah. That's literally his cousin. And he takes over a body and reanimates a dead body and he uses it saying, Oh, this body will do great. It's just what I need. It's a detective. It has all the strategies I'll need to get around this world. I'm taking it. <laughs> That's not how you do things. In a sense, though, it does end up helping the detective, but... Oh, well, I'm positive it will, but still. <laughs> like, is he gonna just, like, walk around for, like, 50 episodes with the decaying corpse as his body? Or is the body just not decay? Don't tell me the answers. I want to see it for myself, but... So many questions about that body. That's the big reason I'm into the scene. Oh, you, you, right you, you'll find out. There was trust yeah. me. Yeah, and so, next, next episode, you'll more than likely find out. So. Yeah, it's like, that's the thing that got me. Like, yeah, the coins are cool. The, the entire Henson idea is cool. The suit's okay. kind of meh. I'm not really fond of the suits yet, but maybe it'll grow me in time. But that's what cemented it for me. That That little creepy thing right there. Okay, so Riz just gave us a preview on Mikey likes uh, the series that uh, that yeah. me and, and Ronan have kind of agreed is our favorite. You know, I mean, we all admit that Guy might be a little bit better, but we, but we all love those. So Riz is about to join that club. So, uh, well, yeah, I'm gonna do like a solo video tomorrow, talk about episode one in more detail, uh, just to kind of give my thoughts on it and more coherent thought than just ah. <laughs> uh, back to Ghost. Um. <laughs> One thing that I always thought about this, like, I mean, and, I, and now that I think about it, I'm, like, looking at this summary that I'm doing, like, this episode kind of almost gave me the hint that Kamen Rider Ghost had, like, multiple different, like, factions. Like, it's not just, like, here's the rider, here's the bad guy, they fight, 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 fight each other, and, like, that's pretty much the whole story. Like, I mean, we had, like, several, we had, like, several different factions. I mean, like, and this was kind of established, because, like, you know, you had Takaru looking for the icons, then you have Makoto, um, but, you know, you probably would have assumed that Sionji was working for the Gamma, but that turned out not being the case. Mm -hmm. And this episode even hints that there's even some bigger, uh, some bigger thing going on, considering how, according to J Javel, uh, Al Alan apparently has a brother who is apparently not telling him everything, so could he be another guy who's calling different shots and if they're different in-game goals for all this? Like, that's one of the things that helps me, because yeah. I don't think, uh, because aside from uh, O's and uh, Rizwan, we'll see how that works later on, and, well, okay, even then I kind of use that use of, like, I've never seen a Kamen Rider series that has, has has ever had, like, different villain factions. Like, I mean, occasionally, like, there'll be a monster that's just, like, acting on his own, but, I mean, usually it's just, like, the same faction. So nothing like how they did 
so nothing like how they did in Bo Kinger and tried and failed with in Operation Overdrive. But uh, but so yeah, I'm really interested to see that in Common Rider. I mean, I don't know if they'll continue on with that, but I really hope they do with Fear and Ghost. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I will say that I'm more interested in the monolith now. And I I want to know if hell and the gun world are synonymous. Like, saying it's hell is actually literally what the religion hell is. Or is it so bad that it's like being in hell but not being in the actual hell? Mm-hmm. Does that make any sense at all? Right. Yeah, 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 I get what he's saying. And also, I still want to know what Grant is up to, because I still think he's, like, public enemy number one, and you just don't know it yet. And at the end of the series, you're going to see him, like, come out of nowhere, like, oh, BT Dubs, Alan, his brother, yeah, they're, they're just my underlings. I've been screwing with you this entire time, for the hell of it, because screw y'all, whatever. Maybe or he'll, or he'll, he could be even their father, like, <laughs> I'm their father. Oh, don't even put a dark finger on me. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope and pray to God that they don't. Oh, I'm wrong too. If I'm right, I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna do a call that dance. <laughs> I'm gonna just kill you at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why are you blaming me for? I ain't, I ain't know. I'm, I just I'm guessed. Blaming you, blaming you. Done, done. Yeah, if the final villain turns out to be Dakaru's father, I'm just gonna like. Yeah. I mean, all they'll need after that is just to have Sinan turn out to be the villain, and then you know people are like, yes, you your aggressive a feelings, boy. So. <laughs> Yes, let the hate flow through you. <laughs> but of course, you know, we already made fun of that, like, uh, last episode, when we, because Alon was basically doing that. In the of the, you know, yeah. So. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think overall we can all agree that, it, you know, what, I mean, Common Rider Ghost has now, like, followed up with the trend that most Sentai, I mean, you know, uh, Rider series are doing now, where they just, uh, they basically decide, like, okay, you know, what? Like, they're pretty much like, I'm not sure how we're going to start this off, so let's just, like, have some episodes where, like, we don't really do anything, and then, ten, and then after ten episodes, that that's when we'll start to rev up everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, you know, they did it in Drive, and they really did it in Gaim, so. Just how the episodes roll. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, stay tuned for episode 11 coming up next. We're going to record that right away. Mm-hmm. And until next time, we are Took a Secret. Comment, subscribe, like. Uh, let us know what you think of us, what we can do to make this show better for y'all. Uh, like we said a couple times before, I am currently watching Oath. This is something that Ronald, Anthony, and Nathan have all watched. So once I get far enough or once I finish the series, depending on what we decide is best, we will be doing some more content revolving around the Oath series, and um, I'm thinking after that I'm going to try and start watching Double, because I saw a clip today and I'm very intrigued by what I saw. Mm-hmm. Very intrigued. So, there's that. Um, the Oath starts up pretty soon too, so we have a lot of things on the horizon for Tokyo Secrets in the next week or two, I think. Because remember, uh, the Oz will be coming out on Valentine's Day, which is in about two weeks from now, more or less. Sixteen days, I eh? no, no, not sixteen. About ten days from now, we got that. Yeah. So we'll be doing a lot more videos, and we're hoping you guys will enjoy the show. I really want some feedback because I see the views that y'all are watching us, but and you guys are awesome for that. You are awesome, but I'd love some feedback, like. You know, let us know what you think. Even if it's like a simple we love y'all or y'all suck, just, you know, let us know what we're doing. Yeah, so like... That we can, like, get some more feedback and make this so better. Because at the end of the day, we're not doing this for ourselves. This is for your amusement. This is for your enjoyment. So if there's anything we can do that's better, if there's something y'all don't like, let us know so we can try and address it and make it better. You know, we're, st- we're a new podcast group. We're trying to mm-hmm. improve, and we need more feedback to make that happen. There's so, always room for improvement. Yeah. So until next time, we're Tokyo Secrets, and we're out. Wait, we're out. Wait, we're out. Wait, we're out. Wait, we're out. Hey, you. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos. 
You can also check out Enemy Secrets on Twitter, Tumblr, and Facebook. Do you want more than that? I know you do. Then go to our website where you can see daily updates and articles and exclusive interviews.